All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to create a web scraper that scrapes Ethereum prices every six minutes from coinmarketcap.com. So this is the website that we're going to be scraping. The easiest way to follow along is to use Replit. If you haven't created an account, you can create one now. We'll wanna create a new Replit and it'll be a Python and we'll call this Ethereum Scraper. So to create this scraper, we're going to use something called Beautiful Soup. And Beautiful Soup is a library uh, that makes it easy to scrape information from web pages. So we're going to import this into our Python file. So from BS4 import beautiful soup. And then we're going to start creating our file. So the URL is going to be equal to the page that we're going to scrape. So we're going to do coinmarketcat.com slash currency slash Ethereum. So if you wanted to scrape the price of something else, you could just go to the home page, say Dogecoin, and you could copy this. Actually, yeah, let's, let's do Dogecoin instead. So paste that in there. And this is the URL we're going to scrape. First thing we'll do is define our function and then let's just print running. So when we call this function, the console over here will show running and then we'll know that it's successfully executed and our scraper is running. Let's just call this to test out to make sure it's working. So the cool thing with Replit is that it'll automatically install the packages for us that we include. So we imported beautiful suit, we set our URL, we created the skeleton function and we have our function call to start running the scraper. So in order to get to content of the page, we're going to create a variable called content. We're going to set it to requests.get.url.text. So in order to for this to run, we're going to have to import the requests package. So this will navigate to the URL and get all the text that loads. Next, use beautiful soup to convert whatever loads into HTML. So that we can navigate it in a much cleaner way. So let's just see what we get here if we run. Okay, we get an error, couldn't find a tree builder with the features you requested, LXML. Do you need to install a parser library? Yes, we do. So we need to go to packages. You can see the installed packages. It has an installed uh, LXML, so we can manually do this here. Click this, add. Okay, looks like it's finished and we'll run again. And now we should see the content print out the HTML. So in all this HTML, what we want is the actual price here. So all of these elements have classes and have different tags, and we can use those classes and tags to identify what we want. So for the price, we'll inspect the element, and you can see this is our element here. It's inside of a div tag, and the div tag has a class that's price value, bunch of underscores, and some random numbers and letters. So what we want to do here is use beautiful soup to find the div tag with a class that contains price value. So I think that these random numbers could probably change on each build. So you don't want to use this exact string because it'll break when they update the website. So in order to go around that, we can just search for a string that contains price value. So we'll go back to Replit. In order to do this, we will use regular expressions. So we'll import the regular expressions package. We're going to find an element with class that contains price value and we'll create a variable and this will be the regular expression package dot compile and then we'll include some regular expression syntax that will search the string that contains the word that we want which is price value so this says that we want to search a string and find the string that contains price value. So now we're going to search the HTML that we have printed on the side here, and we're going to use this variable we just created. So let's add a comment. What we're looking for is the current price 
and we'll set this equal to soup.find and then we're looking for a div and then the second parameter is an object we're going to search for class and then so we're looking for a div element with a class that contains price value. So this variable states that contains price value, so we can just add in this variable here. And then let's see if we print out the price. Let's comment out the soup so we don't get a wall of text. And let's run. Okay, great. So we were able to print out the price element. So we got that div that we were searching for got the div class and then the price is in here. So the price is inside of this div element. So in order to access the text that's in the div element, we go back to our function here and we just add dot text. So now when we run this again, we should just get the price. Okay, perfect. So we've created a function that when we run it, we scrape this website and we return the current price for Dogecoin. So what if we wanted to create a, an application, a Python scraper that scrapes this website every five minutes and then we save the price over time in a JSON file. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that now. So we're getting the current price. First thing we'll do is we'll prepare JSON object. We'll name this export object equals and then we'll want to have a time field and we'll want to have a price field. When we run the scraper, we want to get the HTML. We want to search the HTML for a div that contains price value. And then we want to save that price value to a JSON file with the current time and the price. So print out export. So in order to get the time, we will use a package called the date time. So we want to get current time. So to do this, we'll use the date time object. And from this, we want to get the UTC time. And then we want to get the timestamp from the UTC time because time in Python, they're objects. So we want to get a string so that we can print this out. Okay, so once we get the UTC time, we want to save this to our object. Awesome. So that's working. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to save this to a JSON file. So the file will save within our Replit repository. And we will use another package for this. So we're going to import a couple things here. So let's import the JSON package. We'll also need to create an array. And we'll want to append this object that we created to our data array. So we'll do data dot append export object. So over time, each time this runs, we'll just add the most recent price to this, and then we'll save this object to the JSON file. And then we'll have a big database of Dogecoin prices over time. So we're using the JSON package here, and we need to First parameter takes the object that we're saving, and then we'll add a couple things so that the JSON is formatted properly. So if we run this, we should have a file that saves, and the file should contain the object that we just created. Okay, it looks like it's run, and we have it with the time and the price. So if we run this again, you'll notice the time and price are overwritten. So it'll just include the most recent run. So in order to get around this, we'll load the prices. We're going to check if the file exists. So in order to check if the file exists, we'll use another package called OS. So if os.path.exists, and then we'll add the name of our file, dogecoin prices.json. So if it exists, we want to load that file and set our data to the data in that file. So we'll open that file and then we'll set our data to whatever is in that file. And if it doesn't exist, 
So if it's your first time running this, it'll just ignore this whole thing. Your data will be empty and then it will create the file for the first time. If it's the second time running through, it'll load whatever is already in here and then it'll, it'll append the most recent time and price to that file. So we build a database over time instead of constantly overwriting. If we run this again, we should have two entries in here in instead of one entry. All right, it's finished, let's check. Awesome, so we have two entries here. It looks like Dogecoin dropped down slightly. The next thing we'll want to add is right now, in order for this to run, we have to manually click run each time and then it stops. So it would be awesome if we could have this run just around the clock 24 seven without us having to do anything at all. So in order to do that, we'll use another library and it's called schedule. And this will allow us to schedule this function. It'll trigger this function to run at whatever increment of time that we want. Okay, so now this says every six minutes, run this function. And once we click run, it should go around the clock. So I'll let this sit and we'll check back and see how often it's been going. Okay, so if you ran that, you would have gotten an error because we need to import one more package called time which is used down here. And just to show that this works, um, I changed it to every six seconds. Again, please do not use every six seconds because you'll probably get blocked. Your IP address will get blocked um, from spamming the website. And then let's take a look at our file. So every six seconds, we should have a new entry. Awesome, so it's running. And as you can see, the price here is all the same because this website only updates their UI every five or six minutes. So once you have this JSON object, you can create a website that has a graph similar to what they show on their page here. So you can see it's time and price. So we already have our time data and now we have our price data. So we can create this chart over time. You can create a newsletter, you can create a website, whatever you want. If you have any feedback or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll help as much as I can.